the larger animals, when they come through, more dangerous for us. Anyway, that's all right. Buffalo has always been a huge interest to me. As a kid, I played cowboys and Indians, and I was the Indian on horseback. I had a spotted horse, and subsequently I have a spotted horse now. We started off with cattle in terms of livestock. It gave us a lot of practice in corrals and learning how the livestock would move and training the horses before we got into buffalo. You got him, Doug. We get about every kind of reaction when people come here to see the buffalo that you can think of. Uh, most of the time, they're very surprised that there are this many buffalo right here, 20 minutes north of Ann Arbor, Michigan. The most fascinating part about buffalo for me is it, they're so iconic in the Old West, the whole westward movement for the United States. And then you look at that, and they're the largest land mammal um, here today. And they're not a domesticated animal. He only needs this ear tag, then he gets to go. Because we are a private herd and we are a managed herd, uh, it's important that we keep our buffalo healthy. Can you hand me a different pin? Come on, big boy. So we do try to make sure we put identification tags in to help us identify each buffalo very easily. And those are the red and yellow tags that we're putting in their ears. Um, also, uh, there are state and federal mandated shots that we uh, provide to our animals that are in our breeding stock program. Okay, this one goes straight through. Come on, baby. In America, commercial production in the beef industry is very controversial. There's a couple things that happen that drive that commercial industry. First off is all the animals are sold on weight. And the cheapest way to put weight on an animal is to feed it junk feed, corn, and produce fat. And in the commercial feeds, there's also a chemical, one of them is called Bovatec, that makes the animal always believe they're hungry. So when they're going up for that corn and grain mix that has those antibiotic hormones and feed supplements in there, when they eat, part of what they eat makes their stomach and their brain say, oh, I'm hungry, as if they never ate. So they're actually overeating, and that overeating is what's causing them to put all that fat on. If I can get one nail in here, I'll be lucky. Here, they've got a significant number of acreage to graze, they're always grazing. Um, we do provide supplemental hay, but they've got plenty of room to roam all the time. It makes for a much healthier animal because they're building their muscle mass, not building their fat mass. Now, buffalo are, are very strong. So uh, pound for pound, muscle for muscle. They say that uh, buffalo are eight to 10 times stronger than uh, yeah. cattle would be. Yeah, I've seen them roll cars and I've seen them roll pickup trucks and I've seen them roll Jeeps and I've seen a horse get killed, I've seen a person get killed by them. It's, um, you know, it's a dangerous business. Hi, Lakota. Um, I've always said they're God's cattle is, is sort of my way of putting it. Unlike the cattle that we know or dogs that we know that are really all man-made creatures, buffalo really haven't changed much in a million years. Hey, look out, coming out!